let's work with the half angle identities. For example, if sine of theta is negative 3 fifths and theta is between 3 pi halves and 2 pi, we'll find the exact value of sine of theta over 2. Let's recall the half angle identity for sine. We have that sine of theta over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine theta all divided by 2. Now we're given that sine of theta is negative 3 fifths and that theta is between 3 pi halves and 2 pi. Therefore we can draw the following triangle. Remembering that sine of theta is equal to y divided by r. And if this is negative 3 fifths, notice down here we put the negative with the y because y's are negative in quadrant 4 and r is always positive. And remember that cosine of theta is equal to x divided by r. And so if we can find x here, then we'll be able to determine what cosine of theta is, which we then can use over here on the left to determine sine of theta over 2. And to find x, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to help us. Namely, we have x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Therefore, x squared plus negative 3 squared is equal to 5 squared. Or x squared plus 9 is equal to 25. Or x squared is equal to 25 minus 9, which is 16. Which means that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 16. Or x is equal to plus or minus 4. But x is in quadrant 4, and in quadrant 4, x is greater than 0. Therefore, we're going to choose the positive value here. And therefore, cosine of theta is equal to positive 4 divided by 5, which we can plug into our half-angle formula over here. But there's one more issue with this formula, isn't there? What does this plus or minus mean? Does that mean that there's two solutions here? No, we're going to choose either the positive or the negative depending upon the quadrant that theta over 2 lies. That is, if sine of theta over 2 in that quadrant is positive, we'll choose the positive, and if it's negative, we'll choose the negative. Now remember that we're given that theta lies between 3 pi halves and 2 pi. However, we don't want to know where theta lies. We want to know where theta over 2 lies. So let's divide everything by 2 then. So 3 pi divided by 2, all divided by 2 is 3 pi fourths. And 2 pi divided by 2 is pi. So therefore, theta over 2 lies between 3 pi fourths and pi. That is... If this is 3 pi fourths and this is pi, that means theta over 2 is somewhere in here. And since sines are positive in quadrant 2, sine of theta over 2 is greater than 0. Therefore, we're going to choose the positive value up here in our formula. Now, there's a common mistake that students make that should be pointed out here. Looking over at the figure on our right, we see that theta is in quadrant 4. And students will think because theta is in quadrant 4 and signs are negative in quadrant 4, that they should choose the negative value here. Don't look at where theta lies. Look at where theta over 2 lies. All right, so then this is equal to, we're choosing the positive. We have square root. 1 minus, we found that cosine theta was 4 fifths. Still have all divided by 2 which is equal to the square root of 1 minus 4 fifths, which is 1 fifth, divided by 2, which is the square root of 1 over 10, or rationalizing, we get square root of 10 over 10. 
which would be our answer. And this is how we work with these half-angle identities. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.